We're back with Mario Cantone and Nicely Nicely Johnson from Guys and Dolls. <laughs> This or is a, Benny it, South Street. That's what I should have said. This is a this is a guys and dolls suit, no question. It, I love it. It's yeah. very nice. All right, so third night. We're here in the middle of the third night. Yep. We've uh, we just saw uh, our, our first uh, handsome and homicidal film, yes. uh, Peter Bogdanovich's Targets. Yes. Now we've got uh, from 1981, Lauren Bacall, James Garner, Maureen Stapleton, and Michael Bain, who is the handsome and homicidal fellow here in The Fan in the from fan. 1981. This is your kind of movie. Oh, my God. Well, first of all, I read the book even before they, I knew the movie was coming out. And when the movie came out, I was all excited. And it's Lauren Bacall. Who, yeah. Yeah. I used to sit at her feet. I used to go to this Christmas party every year, the great Hal Prince and his wife, Judy, the director, Hal, and producer. And I used to sit at her feet and ask her and questions. Hal Prince, do, uh, he, did, uh, he did cabaret, didn't he? He certainly did. And he, he, he produced it. Oh, look at that. Where are we gonna let oh, that, we're just going to let that go? The gay jeans <laughs> are just falling off you. But um, this is a perfect vehicle for Lauren McCall. And it's who Lauren became um, in her Broadway years. Lauren McCall plays... Sally Ross, a great Broadway star. Who's also been a film star. She's it's, like coming back to Broadway. Well, it, that's why they gave it to her, because yeah. it's so who she was. She was a great film star in her day. And then she came to New York and came to Broadway. She's really... Great in this movie. She didn't love it. She, she hated it. First. She, she said it was gory and it was not the picture I wanted to make. I wanted to make a picture about a woman. Well, it's called a fan. So, and you're going to be stalked and, and horrified. I love the camp of this movie, like the musical theater rehearsals, even though it's 81, they're so 70s. Everyone's in those leotards and kicking and jumping. And you look at the musical and you'll see, you don't even know what the musical is. Well, they make no effort to explain yeah, what it is. Is it a is, review? Yeah. Is it a plot musical? I don't think so. And Maureen Stapleton, who plays like a sidekick to her, who's wonderful. She keeps the business of Sally Ross moving forward. Absolutely. Yeah. And she gets these letters from her fans, one of whom, Maureen Stapleton, thinks is dangerous. There's a scene, in fact, where Bacall yells at Stapleton, oh, like, yeah. you're being rude to this guy. Yeah. We don't talk this way to our fans. And Stapleton's like, I'm the one that has to put up with him. He's the one that's gone too far. He is yeah. absolutely nuts. You'll see there's a relationship with her ex-husband, who's played by James Garner. Uh, Garner said it was one of the worst pictures I ever made. Yeah. The only upside, he said, of course, was that he got a chance to work was with, working with her. With, with Betty course. McCall, yeah. He probably did a, a week on it and he was done. Yeah, was done. You know, which is a good way to do it. And you get your billing and you're uh, you're the male lead, even though, well, not really. Michael Bain is the male lead. Michael Bain, of course, became more famous later on for The Terminator. For The Terminator, yeah, yeah. And yeah. he's very scary in this. And when I first saw it, I was like, he's too young, he's too good looking, this doesn't work for me. But he's really very, very dark in it and very good. And the way he stalks, with each letter, he gets angrier and angrier. The psychosis of him is really played out well. And what's alarming, you know, you think that you can't reach people, but what is realistic in this, what feels really authentic is how easy it was for him to get to her, right? I mean, they, you know, some stuff they jump over, like final steps, of how you get inside an apartment building or something. But like, you just go where they're rehearsing, hang out at the coffee shop across the street, walk through the door you at the right time. You easily get into yeah, a rehearsal. Totally, room. easy, 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 easy. yeah. You and, know, that, and so you now understand why that when you get big stars and they got some protection with them, you're like, this, this is why. Yeah. This is why. I think there's probably more security on Broadway now, too, when there is a big star. All right, let's watch the movie. Okay. More afterwards. Here it is from 1981. Lauren Bacall, Maureen Stapleton, James Garner, and Michael Bain in The Fan. Yes, The Fan. How about that choreography? How about this <laughs> stuff? I mean, it's just like one, and the and the music is written by Marvin Hamlish, and the lyrics are by Tim Rice. But this, she's coming up singing, "I want hearts, not diamonds." I've had enough champagne. Give her a better song. Ay ay ay. And the musical, what is that musical? I don't think that's the point of the movie. No, I know that, but for me, because <laughs> yeah. I'm a Broadway guy, I'm like, what is? This it? is what I'm like in a movie about baseball. Yeah, exactly. right. I know you yeah, are. Yeah, I know, of yeah, course, because yeah. you know when it's false right, and right. when it's knows real. Right, knows when yeah. it's false. So I, yeah, I definitely didn't pay attention to that part of the fan, uh, <laughs> but it did seem, <laughs> no, but I, but it did seem like the problem with the fan and why Garner thought it was one of the worst movies he ever made is because it's thin. Some substance would have been brought out if they just come up with one real, well-choreographed, well-thought-out number to make it seem like it was actually a That's big, right. 
a big show, right? Yeah. That, that if the show inside the show met the moment, then there's just little things like her ditching the police protection. She didn't need to escape from it. She just could have told them where she's going and they would have come with her. And Maureen Stapleton with brutal slashes, she got bandages. Oh. And then a couple weeks later, there's, there's no, no scar. There's no scars. Yeah. She's better. <laughs> I love their relationship. Though. Oh, They're... no, the best scenes are Stapleton and Bacall. By I far. agree. Yeah. This was released right after John Lennon was assassinated in front of the Dakota building. And she lived at the Dakota she, building she, when this happened. Yeah, so she lived at the Dakota. So I don't think this movie had a chance to be really successful, but it didn't, no. it hurt definitely that the idea of a fan stalking a celebrity and that felt very fresh. And yeah, yeah uh, Lennon was killed in the end of 1980 and this movie was yeah. out in the, 81. I think in the spring of 81. Yeah, yeah, and it was a big bomb. Okay, at the end, when she finally goes, y'all pathetic, she stabs him and she dies. And then the next shot is him in the second row on the aisle. Who put who, him there? Who put him there? Who moved who him? Who picked? Could you There's see nobody else in the theater? Yeah. You're so heavy. I can't <laughs> get you over. I want to put you on the aisle in the second row. That's where I want you. And she stabbed him in the neck, so he bled out. So the guy's he's covered in blood. Covered. The other thing is, at this point in her career, she was doing high point coffee. Yeah, there's a lot of talk about coffee. That's right. And yeah. she's always like, I'd like some coffee. Would you like some coffee? Yeah. Ah, this coffee's terrible. And I can't believe they didn't mention high point, but it was all this coffee stuff. Elsa, I'd kill for a cup of coffee. Oh, I get When I met her for the first time, was at a... Well, I was after... Actually, it was after Assassins, the show I did on Broadway, and she came back and she... Even when she complimented you, she was like, she was like, you were very good and it was very disturbing. <laughs> Right, yeah. Uh, you know, very rough. And then I did these benefits called um, Nothing Like a Dame, that the great Phyllis Newman, who was married to Adolph Green. That's a uh, Nothing Like a Dame, by the yeah, way. That's from no, South Pacific. Yes, very good. Oh, my God. But that's because it was too, a movie you'd have never too, known. No, do you know what it's from? What? In uh, eighth grade, we were going to put on that show. And I had a were you not playing insignificant, Lieutenant Cable? I had a not insignificant part, and one of the songs I was going to sing it was Nothing, was like, nothing a like a Dame. It's a fascinating childhood story. Anyway, um, Bacall, I met at this Nothing Like a Dame benefit for the Actress Fund. You think your story's better just yes, because it, it includes Lauren Bacall? it is. And I would say to her, I do an impression. She goes, you do? I said, yeah, I do your Woman of the Year commercial. She's like, ah, Woman of the Year with my handsome co-star, Harry Guardino. And she was like, oh, Harry. I was like, he died? She goes, he died? <laughs> He's dead. <laughs> I, I would just sit at her feet and ask a question because someone like that, when you're around, you have the opportunity and you're lucky. You ask questions of their career, of their life, and believe me, they want to talk. She was an amazing woman and she was a rough woman. And I think there were a lot of people that were like afraid of her. Definitely. But I just gravitated towards her and she loved TCM. I'm like, Miss, last time I saw her, Miss McCall, they're showing well, all your movies. They are, but they're showing a few, the good ones, too late at night. <laughs> four in the morning. Who's up to see Designing Women at four in the morning? All right, Mario, thank you. As always, a great night. Great. Handsome and homicidal. Which is how I look at you. <laughs> Mario is uh, uh, mercifully done for the night. Uh, he will return uh, next Thursday with another couple of uh, creepy cinema features. But stay with us, because coming up next here on TCM from 1974, Christopher Lee in The Wicker Man. That is next on TCM. Do you know The Wicker Man? <laughs> next on TCM, The Wicker Man. Then... The Lair of the White Worm. And later, The Reptile. TCM is cold-blooded tonight. <laughs>